Hi, my name is Laura Silver. I'm a registered dietitian with Sodexo here at University Hospitals. So today our cooking class is all about meatless meals. What we're doing in these classes, we're really trying to bring you recipes that are budget friendly and family friendly, and recipes that look good and taste good and are really good for you all at the same time. That's really making the most of your food budget when you can stretch your food dollars and really get the most out of your meals and feed yourself and your family those nutritious meals. We're also bringing safety tips when we can. So, of course, we want to prevent foodborne illness and prevent some common injuries that can happen in the kitchen. But being a safer cook in a lot of ways can make you a more efficient cook, can help you enjoy the time you have in the kitchen and help things to go a lot faster. And safe knife skills are a really good example of that, actually. Also, we're always looking for recipes that are using common, easy to find ingredients. We purchased everything today right here at Dave's Market in the Midtown neighborhood of Cleveland, and that's where we're recording today, inside the teaching kitchen, inside the store at Chester and East 61st. So, today is all about meatless meals. Why are we, doing, why are we talking about meatless meals? Well, right now, more than ever, I would say, it's really important to be flexible in your home cooking. So maybe you're trying to get away with using less meat or even no meat at all in your meals due to shortages at the store or you're trying to make fewer trips to the store or maybe you have trouble finding your favorite products these days. So it's really important to be flexible in your home cooking and know how to put together meals that taste good and that are nutritious and balanced for your family. So that's what we're doing here today. Chef Tony is going to make you a delicious Middle Eastern dish that's called Mujadara. Now, it looks a lot like essentially beans and rice, which many cultures around the world have a version of that, but it is so much more. So we're using really naturally flavorful ingredients instead of adding a lot of extra salt or a lot of extra sugar. We're getting that flavor from these naturally flavorful ingredients like onions and garlic and herbs and spices. There's also a sauce that goes on top that's really simple that you might find yourself using and making again and again and using on a variety of dishes. The base of the dish is, these, is the lentils and rice, and specifically brown lentils and brown rice. Those are two examples of plant-based foods that are naturally great sources of nutrients like fiber and folate and iron and calcium, all kinds of good things. And they're also good sources of protein, so you can actually get plenty of protein from this dish, especially with the sauce on top, you'll see later. You can get plenty of protein from this dish without using any meat at all. So are you ready? Let's get started. Welcome everybody. My name is Anthony Verona. I'm the culinary director for University Hospital Health System with Sodexo. And as Laura mentioned, we're going to make a dish today called Mujadara, which is basically like a Lebanese uh, Italian risotto. So lentils, in this case it's going to be brown rice instead of white rice, and a bunch of different herbs and spices, as well as some onions. The onions are very uh, forward and front forward of this dish. So first of all, I just want to make sure we all wash our hands prior to um, working with any food. So I'm going to show you that over here. You know, it's important to wash your hands for 20 seconds to, you know, get rid of any germs or, or so forth that you may have on your hands. Um, in this day and age, it's always good to wash your hands no matter what, but especially when you're handling food. Secondly, we're not going to be dealing with any raw uh, meats today. So <clears throat> if we were dealing with raw meats, it's even more, especially that we want to uh, wash our hands. But today we're making a vegetarian dish. Again, as I referred to, it's called Mujadara. So <clears throat> let's talk about some ingredients first of all. So right here, here's uh, uh, a short grain brown rice. We're using brown rice today because I believe Laura mentioned the health benefits of brown rice, a little bit healthier for you. We're also using lentils today and you can see they're even parts. One of the things I did with the brown rice is I rinsed it. Uh, brown rice can tend to take a long time to cook and it has a lot of starch in it. So I rinsed it several times until the, the, the water was clear. At first you would see it was very cloudy, eventually it became clear and now it's ready to go. So one thing I got ahead of time, <clears throat> there's onions twice in this, so if you don't like onions, this may not be the dish for you, but we have a caramelized onion here that I got started here. Uh, just sweated these down um, and got them nice and golden brown with just a tad bit of oil. Next we're going to start the, the, uh, the mujadara itself. 
All right, so in the Mujadar, there's a couple different um, ingredients we're going to use. Now you can see I have everything already pre-prepped, chopped up, what we call mise en place. So mise en place in French is everything has its place and every place has its thing. So you can see I have everything all set up, ready to go. That's important because this is going to go quick. So what I did is added a couple, couple tablespoons of olive oil to my pan here. I'm going to give it a second to heat up. Now when you know it's heating up, you can see a little bit of shimmering of, oil, of, the, of the oil, and I can see that right now. You don't really need it to be smoking hot, but just a moderate to medium heat. So here's my diced onions, and you can hear that sizzle. That's called saute. Now we're going to be saute in this. In French, saute means to jump, so I can see those onions jumping in that pan right now, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to give this just a little bit of a stir. Now I made, uh, for the, the, the magic of TV, I made some ahead of time, so at the end here, we're not gonna have to wait to eat, so we're gonna have this right away. So I'm gonna give this a second to, to just get a little bit of what we call sweat. We don't need a lot of color on this, like we have here with the caramelized onions. We just wanna soften the onions a little bit, just to, just to soften them up. All right, now once I see they're a little bit translucent or softened, I'm ready to add my garlic. And you can see what I did with my garlic. I didn't mince it up or chopped it up real fine. I kind of gave it a real fine slice. I think it offers a very nice flavor when you slice it. You know, garlic's like pasta. If you chop it up real fine or mince it or slice it, it has a bunch of different flavors. Just like pasta, like fettuccine or spaghetti tastes a little bit different than any other pasta. I don't know why, it's all the same ingredients, but it just is. So once I start to smell that garlic, and I can almost start to smell it. I wish you guys could smell it on, on TV, but I can smell it here now. I'm gonna add my spices, and what I have here is cumin and allspice. A very common to Middle Eastern cuisine, and this is what gives it its unique flavor for the mujadara. So what I like to do is once I smell my garlic and my onions, I'm gonna add my, mujad or my um, allspice and cumin to the pot with the oil. So there's this, remember I told you, there's just about a tablespoon of oil in there. Now what I'm doing is I'm blooming the spices. So what's that mean? That means the oil is reacting with the spices and it's perfuming the air and you can smell it. What you will want to do is just add all your liquid and everything and then add your spices to liquid. You actually want to add the spices to a little bit of oil and that really intensifies the flavor. So I can really smell the, that allspice and the cumin. What I'm going to do now is add my my rice. I'm going to crank up the heat just a little bit. And what I want to do now is toast my rice. I want to toast it. This is an important step because toasting, you can see every stage I've added a little, the onions I added, the garlic, I just didn't dump everything all into, one, into the pan. You want to layer this together and this is what gives it a lot of good flavor and makes it a little bit different than if you're making it, you know, like if you get at a restaurant, for example. There's a little bit different uh, chefy techniques that people do to give it a little extra flavor. Looks like I turned off my heat instead of turning it up. So what I want to do now is toast this, um, this rice. And I can see it now. Little pieces in there are starting to get a little brown. So I'm going to make it, you see how I shake it like that so I get a flat surface on the bottom? So I'm going to give that a second. Let's go over to my onions real quick. And these are looking pretty good. They're almost caramelized. Caramelization just means the sugars and the natural sugars in the onions have, have browned, which is really what we're looking for and offers a lot of flavor. So I can see a little bit of those uh, rice pieces, rice kernels here getting a little brown. Now this is brown rice, so it's raw brown rice. This isn't parboiled, like a lot of times at the store you'll see parboiled rice. So this is going to take a good 40 minutes to cook. Um, like that's why I made it some, some ahead of time. So I don't want to add my lentils now. I want to add my lentils about three quarters of the way down uh, till the rice is cooked. Uh, and that's uh, so because lentils only take about 10 to 15 minutes to cook. So I have my portioned out water here. You could use rice or you could use a vegetable stock. You could use chicken stock. But if you want to keep it vegetarian, rice or um, sorry, water or vegetable stock is, is really fine. So what I want to do is crank that up, which it is. And I want to hear a big. S that's what I want to hear. OK. Now cooking rice, I want to bring this up to a simmer. Give it just a second. It should come up really quick because I have a nice big pot. Looks like my caramelized onions are done. I have my lid ready to go here. I'm going to give this one more quick stir. Bring this up to a simmer. Now once it comes up to a simmer, I want to reduce the heat to a low, 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 very low simmer. 
So we're going to cover this up, let this come up to a boil, and then we're going to simmer it up. So as you can see, this is coming up to a simmer. Now is when I want to turn this, I'm sorry, coming up to a boil. Now I want to turn this down to a simmer. Nice slow simmer. And I'm going to let that go for about 35, uh, about 30 minutes and then I'm going to add my lentils later. So we're at the stage now where the rice has cooked for about 25 minutes and I tasted it. I took a little piece out, I put it to the tooth, bit down on it and it's, to me it seems like it needs about another 10 to 15, maybe 20 minutes. So this is a perfect time to add our lentils because they only take about 10 to 15 minutes to cook. So anytime you're adding something that's room temperature or cold to a dish, I always crank up the heat a little bit. That's real important because once you add this room temperature or cold item to this, it's going to drop the temperature and take a long time for it to come back up. So I want this kind of rolling, boiling hard. And then I'm going to add my lentils in. You can see already the bubbles have kind of went down. Now I'm going to stir that in. Remember, I got all my spices and everything in there. Once I bring it up back up to a boil, I'm going to bring this down to a simmer. I'm going to cover it and we're going to let that cook for another 10 to 15 minutes. Once that's done, the rice will be perfectly tender, the lentils will be perfectly tender. We're going to taste it for some seasoning and then we're going to add our, our fresh uh, basil right at the end. And then that'll be our completed dish. Now, we're going to plate this up, but before we plate it up, I like to add a little extra zip to my Mujadar, and this isn't very traditional, but this is Greek yogurt here. And the one thing I didn't mention was tahini. Tahini is basically peanut butter, but made out of sesame seeds. That's all it is. So peanut, peanuts ground up into a paste, and this is sesame seeds ground up into a paste. So it's almost coming up. So what I want to do is add, add this tahini to my Greek yogurt. I don't need to season this with salt, pepper, or anything. I'm just going to add that to my Greek yogurt. I'm going to add a squeeze of lemon to this, and then we're going to plate up our dish. All right, we're going to add a little bit of lemon juice to my sauce that we're making for our mujadara. So I just squeeze it through my gloved hands to get, get rid of those uh, seeds. Now we're going to mix this together, and what you have now is like a, an enriched Greek yogurt that's going to go great with this dish. So, Okay, so now we're going to plate up this mujadara. I'm going to put it in a bowl here. So what I have is the cooked lentils as well as the, the brown rice, and it has like a creamy consistency, almost like a risotto. If you're familiar with what an Italian risotto is, it's basically uh, rice that's made with cream and butter and all that, but this has no, none of that fat. This just has a little bit of water, like we showed you earlier, the onions, the, the, a little bit of salt and pepper, the allspice, the cumin, and then at the end I added the spinach, or I'm sorry, the, the, the basil. So now I'm going to add this uh, sauce I made earlier, this Greek yogurt and tahini sauce, just a nice little dollop on top. And then I'm going to add my caramelized onions all the way around. And you want to talk about a healthy, rich, filling vegetarian dish, this is where it's at. All these rich onions, a lot of good flavors, and then right at the end, I'm just going to add just a little bit of shredded fresh basil right on top. And there you go. And we're going to try that here. So I'm no professional on TV, but every time I watch a TV show or a, a cooking show, they always have to take a bite of it. So I'm going to do that here today. And I think the most perfect bite is going to be take a little bit of that, that Greek yogurt, some of those onions, a little bit of that basil, as well as some of those caramelized onions, all in one bite. And that should do it for me. Mm. I wish you could taste it. But I know the cameraman and Laura are going to taste it right after this. So hopefully you'll make this dish at home. It's really good. Thanks for coming, thanks for watching. There's your mujadara dish. So, this mujadara, why do I love it so much? There's lots of reasons. Did you notice how flexible this recipe was? So there's lots of ways that you can incorporate 
you know, we used something like fresh basil today, but you can substitute other fresh herbs in this dish. You could substitute baby spinach or other greens that you might happen to have around or that you can find easily or on sale at the store. It's also flexible in terms of the flavor component. So we, we got to use fresh lemon juice today, but remember you can substitute other acidic ingredients, something even like white vinegar that a lot of us have around in the house. That sauce, too, is super simple. So it's just mixing that tahini paste and the Greek yogurt. Remember, with the Greek yogurt, you're getting more protein and less sugar. And with that tahini, it's really made simply from sesame seeds. And that's something that is a good source of protein as well. But it also has really important nutrients like calcium and iron. And so together, that sauce adds some really good nutrition in addition to flavoring this dish overall. Don't forget, you can put together meals like this that have plenty of protein and that are balanced in terms of food groups without using the meat. And of course, you could add a little bit of meat as a flavoring to this dish as well, if you wanted to. So I hope you try this recipe at home. Don't forget to download the recipes that we've made available to go along with it, and let us know how it goes. We'll see you next time.